live. All right, so we are live, everyone. My name is Jesse, and I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. For those joining us for the first time, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world. And of course, there are no classrooms right now. All of you are joining us live and at home. And so we so appreciate you continuing to tune in as we highlight scientists, explorers, and amazing facilities from across the globe. Right now, live with us, in addition to our speaker, we are joined uh, by families in St. Charles, Missouri, Tucson, Arizona, and Cambridge, Ontario. So nice to have you taking part, and I'm really looking forward to your questions as we get underway. But the reason we're all here today is for our speaker. So we are joined live by Olivia, and she is an educator at Ripley's Aquarium of Canada. Now, they might be closed to the public right now, but their education and their animal care work goes on unabated. And so today, we're going to learn a little bit about their amazing sea turtles with this live sea turtle feed. A quick housekeeping note before we dive in. In addition to typing in questions on YouTube, anyone who's watching this broadcast can go on the Slido app and use the event code TURTLE to type in questions, upvote their favorites, and take part in interactive polls and quizzes. So I'll share that in the chat bar in just a minute. But without further ado, thank you so, so much for joining us today, Olivia, and take us away. All right, hello everyone. Thank you so much, Jesse. So as mentioned, my name is Olivia and I'm an educator here at Ripley's Aquarium of Canada. We also have Mel, one of our aquarium biologists here. And today we're going to be showing you guys how we do our green sea turtle feed and enrichment. As you can see right now, our sea turtles aren't here yet, but they are on their way. Uh, you'll get a glimpse of this beautiful nurse shark uh, swimming around our act pool for the moment. So today we're standing behind the scenes of our Dangerous Lagoon exhibit, which is our largest exhibit within the aquarium. If you've been to Ripley's before, you might know this exhibit from the large underwater tunnel, the sand tiger sharks, our nurse sharks, just like this one, and our sawfish. It probably looks a lot different from the back here, but this is called the acclimation pool. And this is the area that will put any new animals in order to get used to their new environment, uh, as well as where our scuba divers enter if they're going to do some cleaning. So if you look closely, there's a large gate over there and that's what connects it to the rest of the exhibit. So this is usually open so that the animals can swim freely in and out, just like our beautiful nurse shark. Um, so as soon as our sea turtles will come through, uh, you'll be able to see them through that gate. So here at Ripley's, we have two beautiful green sea turtles. Their names are Spot and Chewy. Um, hopefully Spot will come back soon, uh, but we named them that because Spot has a pinkish light dot on her neck and Chewy was named for her tendency to chew on everything that gets in her path. Um, Spot is considerably larger than Chewy as well, so it's usually pretty easy to determine the two turtles apart. Our turtles get fed several times a week, sometimes here in the acclimation pool and sometimes out front of our Dangerous Lagoon exhibit, so guests can see that happening. We usually perform enrichment, uh, which means that we give them small tasks or environmental stimuli, either by moving the target around or interacting with them, uh, just to keep them stimulated and occupied here at the aquarium. Probably similar to what everyone is doing at home nowadays, keeping everyone happy um, and stimulated. So we provide the stimuli by target training our turtles. So you might see that yellow and black target that Mel has. Mel's also shaking a, kind of like a dinner bell for the sea turtles to cue them in to come towards the acclimation pool just so that they know that it's time for them to get some food. So this is usually Spot's target and she usually has to come to the target to get her food. Uh, this form is enrichment uses positive reinforcement so that when she sees the target, she knows that she's going to get a treat or some food along with it, just so that they're comfortable with interacting with our aquarists, uh, as well as whenever our vet needs to do checkups with the animals, the animals won't be nervous or too excitable. They'll be a lot more comfortable to come up to their targets because they know that it's safe and that they're probably going to get a treat from it. Um, so on the menu today in that small bucket on the side is some bonito and other veggies, looks like bell pepper. They also get a lot of leafy greens, so she has a head of lettuce there. 
Um, and a lot of the sea turtles diet in the wild consists of seagrass and a lot of other greens. So we try to stick to that diet. Green sea turtles are actually named after the green fat um, that color gets from the chlorophyll, from those leafy greens in their diet. So we wanna make sure that we stay close to that, um, making sure that they keep nice and green and happy. So hopefully Spot will come over. Sometimes when we're relying on animals, it's a hit or miss, which is okay. It's a good thing we got a glimpse of that cute nurse shark that got a couple treats. Um, so green sea turtles are one of seven species of sea turtles. The largest is the leatherback sea turtle. Um, and those ones can actually get to be over 1,500 pounds. So they're pretty large. Green sea turtles are, I think, the second largest. Um, their shell will typically grow to three to four feet long, which is pretty long. And the largest sea turtle recorded was over 700 pounds, which is pretty big. Um, that one specifically had a shell over five feet. So they can get quite large. Um, our sea turtles are pretty young. They're around 25 years old. In the wild, they usually live for upwards of 80 years. So ours can be considered to be pretty young. Uh, they're found all over the world in over a hundred different countries, but generally they stick to warm subtropical waters uh, like the Caribbean, the Indo-Pacific, or the South Americas. Um, so they do live in salt water and they consume a lot of salt water with their food. So you might notice if you were ever up close to the sea turtle, they actually have some specialized tear ducts that help leak out extra salty water. Um, so that helps their, their bodies uh, expose of the extra salt. So um, hopefully Spot will come back or Chewy sometime soon. That's okay if they don't. We've got some really cute fish here that will hopefully keep our our, um, our online guests entertained. Um, so some really cool things about sea turtles, they perform something called natal homing, which means they'll return to their place of birth in order to mate. Uh, so a lot of scientists believe they can recognize this birth, birthplace either through uh, chemical cues like smell and taste, or they actually navigate there through the magnetic field. Um, males will usually return every year, but females will be less frequent than that, usually every three, uh, two to three years. Um, so a lot of the times the beaches that the turtles return to might be really ideal, but maybe development might change those beaches um, throughout the years. So sea turtles have had an uh, increasing problem where their, their native beaches have been overdeveloped or they're going through some uh, shoreline changes or climate change has made that beach really hot. Um, that's affecting their population rates. Uh, usually once a male and female mate, the female will climb ashore to dig herself a nest and lay her eggs. Sea turtles will lay around 100 eggs in a nest. They'll bury them. Uh, and then it's time for the hardest part of a sea turtle's life, which I think everyone knows is the hatchlings trying to return to the shore. So after about two months, the eggs will hatch and then uh, they'll try to return to the shore by just walking along the sand towards the ocean. But it's very dangerous. They're really susceptible to being eaten by scavengers like birds and crabs um, or getting lost. So uh, a lot of the time there will be some conservation groups trying to make sure there's no outside forces along the beach when, when those eggs uh, and hatchlings are trying to get to the ocean, which is really cool. Um, uh, another really cool thing about hatchlings is that the temperature of the nest actually determines whether the hatchlings will be male or female. So when the nest is really warm, that leads to a lot more female eggs. 
And when the nest is very cold, it leads to male eggs. Typically you want a perfect temperature so that you get an even number. So that future populations, there's an even, uh, even chance for mating in the future. But with climate change happening and rising temperatures that affects sea turtle populations in the way that too many females are being born. So future generations are having a low reproductive rate because there aren't enough males per female. So that's how temperature really affects the turtles in the wild. Yep. Um, typically to tell female and male turtles apart, uh, you can tell them apart by the length of their tails. So they're hard to distinguish unless you get a really good look at their tails. Um, the male's tails will usually be a lot longer than female's tails. Um, so when our turtles do come back, you'll be able to notice that they do have quite short, stout tails. Um, but it is a little hard to compare unless you have one male and one female. Uh, but that is how you'd be able to tell. So sea turtles, they are air breathers, just like us. Um, when they swim around, you might see them uh, going up to the surface to catch some breath. Since they're uh, reptiles, they do need to come up to the surface pretty often to breathe. Um, when they're really active and foraging and looking for food, they have to come up about every couple of minutes. But when they're resting or sleeping, they'll use less energy and less oxygen and they can actually hold their breath for uh, four to seven hours. They can turn their heart rates really, really low when they're resting or napping and hold their breath for a very long time. So if you've ever been here, you might have seen our sea turtles sleeping along the bottom of the tank or underneath some coral. We get a lot of comments that our sea turtles look like they're stuck underneath the coral de decoration, um, but we don't have to worry about that uh, because they can hold their breath for a really long time. And they're usually just super comfortable in a nice, dark, tight space. Olivia, yeah. if I may, this has been like the best presentation. You have shared so much in a presentation for a turtle feed with no turtles involved. I am so <laughs> impressed. Um, what I think we might do while we're waiting, hopefully the turtles show up in the next few minutes and we get a chance to see them. But if we want, we've already got some questions pouring in on YouTube and we've got uh, five live families now. If we could dive in with Q&A and then if the turtle comes, you can share a little bit more if you have any. Does that work for you? That sounds great. Very cool. Well, first and foremost, actually, uh, because I know what the setup is behind the scenes, one of the questions we've been getting in a lot of our programs is how they get these big animals into this tank. So if you could show us the crane system in the behind the scenes area to highlight how we get some of our bigger animals there, that would be super cool. Yeah, no problem. So when we do get our really large animals, this is the first spot. And they, uh, when they are way too heavy to lift, we have a big crane system. So this is the track for the crane system. And you'll see that it, you can follow it all the way down the hallway out to the doors. So when they do come, it's typically in a really large truck called a life support systems truck. And that will park in our loading dock. We'll open up some really huge doors and we'll hook up the animals to a crane using a big net system. So I can actually show you the net system over here. We've got some really large nets to help facilitate that. It does take a lot of people, a lot of hands um, to make sure that everything's going smoothly, especially when we are moving the really large sharks. We want to make sure they're not out of the water for very long. So we do make sure that they have a line of oxygenated water going through their mouth just so that they can keep breathing and we'll move them as quickly as possible. Super cool. All right. Uh, let's dive in with questions. So a couple notes. We've got tons of people joining in on YouTube and welcome to our entire full classes on YouTube from all over Minnesota, Michigan, Alberta and Florida and Ontario and more. Uh, we really appreciate you being here. For those on Slido, I'm gonna start the live quiz in a few minutes, so just check for that. I'll begin it uh, pretty much when I'm, we've started our first question, but we're gonna start with a question from one of our live groups. So I'm gonna to go to April's group, uh, and if you guys have a question to kick us off about turtles, come on up and go for it. Nope, no questions no yet. Qu he says he doesn't have any questions. I think he's I can, camera shy. <laughs> I can come back in a second, no worries at all. Uh, how about Angela? I know you've been joining us for a few, so if you have a question, kick us off. Um, I have a question. Um, is it true that turtles breathe their butts? 
Yes, the breathe through the butt question. Olivia, take it away. <laughs> okay, so for the most part, I don't think sea turtles will do that, but I do believe that's true for freshwater turtles. So turtles you might see around your ponds or lakes, if you live around here, I think that applies to them. All right, uh, we always get that with turtles and I love it. So thank you so much for that question. All right, Lucas on YouTube wanted to ask, uh, if males' tails are longer and females' tails are shorter, how do you tell the babies apart? That's a great question. I don't think it's very easy to be able to tell the babies apart until they do fully mature. Yeah, so we do sessions with a group called the Turtle Hospital in Florida, and they say the same thing. So if you have baby turtles, it's basically impossible until they get older. Um, so good question, guys. All right, let's go to uh, Tracy in Tucson, Arizona. Lauren, uh, come on up, guys, and uh, ask away. Well, um, I was wondering, for the um, little aquarium area, you have the little feeding area, which is on screen right now. It's connected to what exactly? Yeah. That little or opening. Yeah. So this is the acclimation pool. Over there is actually the opening to our dangerous lagoon exhibit, which is the largest one we have. So that's the huge tunnel you can walk through with the big sand tiger sharks, the sawfish, the stingray, and the turtles. So that's what that connects to. We have a special backup part for that tank, just so that the really large animals have somewhere off exhibit to go that they can fit in. Okay, very cool, guys. Uh, I'm gonna take another question from Slido now. Ava wants to know, how long are the turtles? How long are they? That's a good question. Our turtles specifically, I'm not sure about their size. They weigh about 90 kilograms, but I would say that our green sea turtles are probably around four and a half feet long. Okay, so about the length of some of the kids that are joining in today, we've got some younger kids today, so think about you as a turtle. Um, all right, I'm gonna go to Jennifer's group. Uh, if you guys have a, or yeah, Jennifer's group, if you guys have a question, come on up. Let's just unmute your mic. Wants to unmute itself, or maybe not. There we go, hi. <laughs> hey, do you guys wanna ask? So. The girls were wondering what would happen if the turtles don't come to eat right now. Yeah. When will they get another chance to come back? Awesome. So they'll probably just get their other chances tomorrow when their scheduled feedings are. So this does happen. Sometimes the turtles are either sleeping or they're just not really interested in eating, which is fine. Um, so the Aquarius will either try again soon or just give them another chance the next day. That goes with a lot of our animals, um, but we do want to make sure that if they go for a longer period than normal without eating, that is definitely a sign that we should check up on them and make sure everything's okay. Um, but depending on the animal, skipping one meal might not be so bad for them. Yep, fantastic. All right. Uh, Miss Lumley wanted to ask a question that we've gotten in every one of our Ripley's Aquarium sessions, and that is, are these rehab turtles bred in captivity or were they taken from the wild? So these turtles were not taken from the wild. They were rescue turtles. They were rescued from a turtle farm, which tries to breed sea turtles to sell them uh, in illegal trades. So we rescued both of them and they've been here since we opened. Okay. Awesome. I remember I, I was actually one of the team back when they did open and it was a very, very, they're very tiny, they're much tinier than they are now. They've grown considerably. So if you've come to the aquarium over the last few years, you will have seen the turtles get much larger than they used to be. And it's really cool to see. All right. Uh, let's go to Clara. If you have a question for us, come on up. Um, I don't have a question. Oh, that's okay. I can come back in a minute if you have one. <laughs> How about back with April's group? If you guys have a question, go for it. Did you want to ask anything? Um, did you ever have any baby turtles in your um, aquarium? Yeah. So unfortunately, we've never had any juvenile or baby turtles. These ones are in their mid-20s. And since we've been open for about seven years, uh, we've had them since they were around 20 years old. So they were, uh, they were older than, than baby turtles when we got them. 
Fantastic. Again, if you want to see some baby turtles, turtle hospital sessions, we've had many in the past with them, so I, I encourage you to check that out. All right, Finley wants to ask, how fast do turtles travel, Olivia? That's a great question. Um, they are quicker in water, I think, but they usually don't pass about eight kilometers an hour. So it's anywhere from one kilometer an hour to eight. So a brisk walking speed. Awesome. All right. Uh, Angela's group, I'm going to come back to you guys because I know you have another question. Go for it. Um, what is the oldest living turtle? That is an excellent question. Um, I'm not too sure what the age of the oldest living turtle is, but probably close to how old people can get, probably closer to 100. Very cool. Yes, we've had... This has been mentioned in a few of our programs in the past. Some turtles we know can get up to 150. 100 is a good bet. They are one of the longest lived animals in the world, though, which is really, really cool. So we always get the turtle age question. I'm sorry that you guys aren't getting the chance to see Spot and Chief, because they really are beautiful. So if you if they don't happen to come during this broadcast, check out our past sessions with the aquarium with the turtle feed, because they have come up then and come up really close to the camera, and it's really cool. All right, I'm gonna take a question from Satara and Mamuna, who have been joining us for tons of our sessions on Slido and YouTube over there the last week. Is. Oh, there we go. We got a turtle friend. Satara, I'm gonna to come to you guys in a second. Today, but she got here. Awesome. I've sent someone to go get her aquarist spot. Here is our green sea turtle. If you can see the pink spot on her neck, that is her identification marker. She's sitting here wondering where the food is. So Mel will be back with her bucket of food. <laughs> awesome, so nice to see her. Hi, Spot. So while she's here, while we're waiting for the feeding to begin, uh, Sitara and Maymuna wanted to ask, do turtles like to float at the top of the water or do they dive deep? Um, the turtles here definitely love to float, so, uh, but they do dive. So depending on the time of day or what they're feeling like, if they're foraging for food, they'll probably dive down to eat from seagrass beds, but they do like to stay closer to the surface, especially when they're active, because they do need to come up for air every few minutes. Um, so if they are diving down really deep and back up, uh, they'll probably take a couple moments just to hang out on top, take some deep breaths, and then go back down. Awesome. All right. Rachel asked a question, which is a, a question we haven't got for turtles before, and I like it. It's what are the shells made of and do they shed them? Do they Amazing question. So their shells are made of keratin. So this is comparable to what our fingernails and our hair is made of, except it is a lot harder. Um, they might shed a little bit off of them, um, but they grow with their shells. Um, so they might sh shed a little, you know, smaller pieces, uh, but they'll keep that shell because it is actually a modified rib cage. So um, they can't actually bring their limbs or head inside their shell like you might see freshwater turtles do. Uh, they'll keep that shell for life. And I like this question from Lucas uh, online. He wanted to ask, do the baby turtles come with a shell or do they grow it as they get older? Uh, baby turtles, I believe, are born with their shells. Yeah, they're a little bit leather, more leathery, so they tend to harden as they get older, um, but they, they are born with a shell. That's how they're able to pack into that egg and, and be sort of folded up. I really encourage everyone to, tuning in at home, check out baby sea turtles heading to the ocean. It's one of the coolest things in the world. But we'll get nice and close to spot right now with some lettuce. Question, well, he's scratching her. Uh, do they feel the scratch on their back? Because we always get that question. Absolutely. So she does feel the scratches. She can feel it. Um, so kind of like our fingernails, it might be super thick, but she can feel that. And in our exhibit, you might see her scratching her shell along the coral decoration just for that sensation. Awesome. All right. For our live viewers uh, or live families, I just want to note, if you guys want to ask more questions, you can either raise your hand or type it in the chat bar to me. I'll come back to you. I'm taking a few from YouTube and Slido right now, but I want to make sure if you have more questions that I come back to you. But I wanted to ask this one from Miss Hart's class, uh, and that is, what size is the enclosure that you have them in? How many gallons of water is this? The Dangerous Lagoon exhibit is two and a half million liters of water. And in that tank, we house about 10 sand tiger sharks, two um, sawfish, two turtles, a stingray, and a 
lot of fish. And a partridge in a pear tree. Um, all right. <laughs> Emma wanted to know, and I think you did say this earlier in the presentation, how many kinds of sea turtle are there? We're getting this question a lot, so I'd like to repeat it for our guests. There are seven different types of sea turtles, and unfortunately, at least six of those seven are considered to be threatened or critically endangered. This is something where, again, you guys can tune in at home and learn more about sea turtles uh, in the wild and what you can do to help protect them. There's amazing organizations that are working towards sea turtle conservation. So if you love spot and you love sea turtles in general, do check those out when you're done. All right, I'm going to go back to April's group live. If you have another question, come on up. Um, are saw sharks extinct in the wild? That's a great question. I believe they're critically endangered, but they're not yet extinct, thankfully. You will have seen them. Uh, that's a cool question. So they're also in this tank. And for anyone who's watched our sand tiger shark feed or our sawfish feed, you will have seen them in, in the tank. They're the biggest animals at the aquarium. They're really, really cool. cool. So I encourage you to check that out. All right. Um, Lauren, I'm going to come back to you. Actually, if you're, you don't need to type in the question, I'll go straight to you. So if you want to ask that live, go for it. Let's see. Hey, Lauren. I was wondering um, if the sea turtle patterns can or size can change depending on the gender or species. Yeah. I was that is a great question. The, um, size you. or patterns. Yeah. Perfect. That is a great okay. question. So on these patterns. Go ahead, Olivia. It's just it's lagging. It's catching up with what she had said earlier. So okay, no problem. Yeah. So these patterns are actually called scoots, and I believe it's all pretty much the same for all sea turtles. The size and color might vary, but they do all have the same kind of scoots on their shells. So that's what you would call those separate separate pieces on her shells. Very cool. All right. Uh, I'm going to take a few more questions. We are like, again, these sessions fly by. Um, a bunch of kids are asking about if the turtles have teeth, if they bit the Aquarius ever, would that bite hurt? What's the deal if they were to bite you? That's a fantastic question. So Spot doesn't quite have teeth, but she does have a serrated mouth. So we refer to it as a beak. It is strong. And I believe um, someone has been bit by her before, by accident. Um, does it hurt? Yes, it hurts a lot. Yes, like you said it. it does hurt a lot. So I wouldn't put my hands that close to her, um, but the Aquarius are more than comfortable with their animals uh, and they know how they'll behave. So once in a while, some accidents happen, but the animals never mean any harm. There's a huge irony to this question about getting bit by the turtles while these fingers are darting around the mouth the whole time. Sorry, I find that very amusing. Um, all right, good luck, don't get bit. <laughs> um, all right, Athena and Zoe, who again have been joining us for sessions all week long, they wanted to ask, in the wild, fish go up and clean sea turtles. Does that happen in the aquarium? Do the fish ever pick off any parasites on them? It actually does. So the fish in our tanks are known to go up to the sea turtles. Um, they've been very interactive with them. They'll try to pick up them and clean them. But our turtles don't get very algae ridden in this tank. Um, so there's not a whole lot to pick off. So sometimes they'll just be bothersome towards the turtles. Um, and the turtles will just, you know, fend them away. But our fish do interact with the turtles trying to clean them. Awesome. All right. One question I am shocked we haven't got so far. And I think it's because maybe people don't know they're in the same tank. Do the sharks and turtles ever fight each other? Do the sharks go for the turtles or anything like that? I like that question a lot because I love to explain the answer. A lot of people think the sand tiger sharks, they do look super scary and they look like they'd be the bosses of the tank, but it's actually the turtles that rule this exhibit. So Spot and Chewy, even though they're pretty small, not very fast uh, and don't have as sharp of teeth, they do push everything around like they own the place. So when they do swim around, a lot of the sharks aren't really paying attention, but the turtles will be sure to gently move them out of the way. 
<laughs> Fantastic, Olivia. Thank you so much. All right. Well, as we get close to wrapping up, I want to highlight uh, what can kids do at home to learn more about what you guys are doing at Ripley's Aquarium and learn more about sea turtles generally. Amazing. So Ripley's Aquarium, we've been doing a lot of live programs. You can visit our websites if you'd like some fun activities or to learn any more about our exhibits. We also have live feeds um, up online so you can watch our tanks all day long. When it comes to conservation, a really big thing is to be able to spread awareness because it can be really easy. You can talk about your passion with the environment or with animals and conservation and spread that love around, get people really interested. And also trying to change um, small things in our lives like our use of plastics. Sea turtles are really susceptible to accidentally ingesting and eating plastic materials. And there is a lot of plastic in our oceans. So it's trying to cut back on single use plastics like plastic bags at the grocery store, moving towards reusable bags or cutting from plastic straws to reusable straws. So those are some great starters um, and you can get in touch with some really awesome conservation programs or shoreline cleanups to help clean up our beaches and uh, learn more about sea turtle protection. Outstanding. Thank you so, so much, Olivia. And yes, look up uh, programs like OceanWise or Sea Watch at home. These are amazing programs. You can learn how to get sustainable seafood. You can learn the actions you can take to remove plastic waste from the environment, all sorts of really cool things. And do check out Ripley's Aquarium site. It's really fantastic. They've got some great content. From us here at Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants, uh, we are doing four plus programs every single day featuring amazing scientists, explorers, and facilities. So you can subscribe to us on YouTube, see more amazing sessions like today's, join us on social media, or donate if you like what we're doing for social and digital education in these crazy times. Uh, we really appreciate you tuning in today on Turtles. I'm so happy you guys got a chance to see Spot. So I'm gonna spotlight the video on her uh, as we wrap up. Uh, but for now, what I'd like to do is demute every family's microphone to uh, all the groups joining us at home. Uh, could demute their mics and join me in saying a huge thank you to Olivia and the Ripley's team for joining us. Go for it, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so awesome. much. Thank you so thank much, you. everyone, for joining. Yeah. Uh, Amazing. Really thank, you. thank you, everyone. I hope everyone's uh, keeping safe and having a great time. Thank you for joining us all. Awesome. And again, well, we are having a great time. I mean, we get to see sea turtles all live from home. How do you beat that? Uh, Olivia, have a wonderful rest of your day. We look forward to having more sessions with you guys in the coming weeks to go. Thank you so much. I hope everyone has a great day as well. All right. Bye.